Now available in paperback and coming to Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, Dark Succubus, the man who rules the world, is tempted by a sultry succubus in this all-new John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, Dark Succubus in paperback or pre-order on Kindle Unlimited today. As a darkly inclined guy, I'm a big fan of anything related to the goth subculture, and I'm a big comics fan. So when I heard about the goth ghost girl bloodbath Kickstarter, I eagerly put in my pledge the first day it was announced, because I heard about goth ghost girl before the Kickstarter, however, the comic wasn't available for me to pick up. So when I heard about the Kickstarter, I put in my pledge on the first day so I could get both goth ghost girl number one and goth ghost girl number two bloodbath. And after picking up both of these books this Sunday, I can say that they're both modern classics, and I recommend you get both of these books because they are masterpieces. Now, Goth Ghost Girl is about Lily Osiris, the former lead singer of the punk goth band Imminent Hour. And after she was murdered by a deranged fanatic, she now wanders to and fro the earth trying to help those in need as a vengeance-seeking ghost who meets out rough justice on those who deserve it. And in each issue of Goth Ghost Girl, we usually get two to three stories. And usually it's about two stories, one about Lily as Goth Ghost Girl today, and a flashback tale about Lily's days among the living as the lead singer and lead guitarist in the band Imminent Hour. And both of those stories in each issues interconnect to give us hints at Lily's action in the past and how they relate to today. Now, the first story, and Die Freud, is a masterpiece on the level of classic Batman the Animated Series episodes like Heart of Ice. And this story, which introduces us to Lily and shows us how she's a great heroine, is very powerful, very moving, and as you watch her help this deeply troubled girl who's been abused by her stepfather, this one will get you in the feels because this story has a lot of heart and it has a lot of love on the page, and this is a story that is not something for the more sensitive out there because when I look at this story, it is extremely powerful and I have to say, John Shillam Jr. does a masterful job with this story in handling the, the heavy issues and the heavy content, and Sergio Cicada's art is very powerful in this one story. So this one is a masterpiece, and it, is, it leaves a powerful first impression on the reader. If you read this first issue, it's going to literally bring you into Lily's world, and it's going to make you want to read more about this character. Now, the second issue, Rodeo Rage, in the first issue, gives us a flashback tale about Lily and Imminent Hour, and her band, and lets us get to know her bandmates for a minute as they try to help out some, far some farmers who help them by giving them a ride by helping them save their land from a rich land developer. Now, the Second Tale is a bit of a more lighthearted story, but it still has some of the dark undertones of Anne Di Freud. And Rodeo Rage, we get that insight into what drives Lily as a character when she was alive, and how those motivations still drive her to this day. And Dead or Alive, we get to see that Lily is a hero that you want to root for, and she's someone who you really want to anticipate getting the next issue of her stories. Now, the second issue, which was the one that was promoted in the Kickstarter, Bloodbath, is a classic. And this story is a classic because it uh, it's just a masterpiece as related to storytelling. Again, John Shillam Jr. tells an amazing story with Bloodbath, and the dark undertones of Bloodbath really give you some really powerful scenes and we get to see some rich multi-dimensional characterizations in the story on the same level as Anne Freud. But with this story, we get a look 
at Lily's past and how it relates to her future and her relationship with her late boyfriend, Skunk. Now, this one, the first start of it, it really does a great, the first page, splash page, is a brilliant one. We get to see Lily watching the this band in action. And then later on, we get a playful shot at the tropes of modern so-called SJW comics that are produced at companies like Marvel, where we see Lily stopping a these skinheads from assaulting these black girls. And after Lily stops these skinheads from assaulting these black girls, we get introduced to Diablo the Cat, who might be a familiar to Lily. And as the story goes on, we start to find out what happened to Lily's bandmates in imminent hour after she was murdered, and what happened to her boyfriend Skunk is not pretty. That's all I'm going to say about that, because I don't want to spoil the story for Bloodbath, because when I look at the story for Bloodbath, it's on the level of Batman the Animated Series, and the ending of Bloodbath has me anticipating putting in a pledge for that third issue, and if the storytelling in the third issue is as great as the first issue and the second, I see Goth Ghost Girl as being a very promising series because this book is just too is just so good, it's just not funny. Now the second story gives us another look into Lily's past with ultimate music superstars, and this one reminds me a lot of 1980s gem episodes, especially the miniseries Battle of the Bands, where Jem was competing to try to get this record contract so she could save the Starlight House. And this story, we got a look at Lily's love for her boyfriend Skunk and her love for goth music and how that related to the tragic tales of Bloodbath, which we saw early on in the comic. Now, I really loved Goth Ghost Girl. It's a Great comic that, again, I highly recommend you pick up. John Shillam Jr. is a master storyteller here, and he and Sergio Quijada capture the spirit of the goth subculture in every page. And while they celebrate a lot of dark things in Goth Ghost Girl, they also understand the core foundation of the subculture is the music. Because a lot of goth content out here they will produce these stories with characters, but they will forget the core foundation of the subculture, which is the music. But Sergio Quijada and John Shillam Jr. have not forgotten that, and that's one of the things I really appreciated about this series, was the understanding of how important the music is, because the music is the base for everything from the fashion to the art to the literature, and this is one of the things that I love the most about this series. Now, each story in Goth Ghost Girl weaves a tapestry of past and present that has the reader anticipating the next issue so they can find out more about Lily's past and how it relates to the future. And it, in a way, it reminds me of what they tried to do on CW's Arrow. But when I look at the way John Shillam Jr. does it with his masterful skills at craftsmanship in writing, he shows how these supernatural characters, are, like Lily, have this humanity and heart, similar to what I saw in, again, those old Batman the Animated Series episodes. And I love the way he uses things as related to literature, like subtlety, nuance, irony, and foreshadowing, to tell, a sto tell stories that are haunting and moving and just really make you care about these characters and make you connect with them almost immediately. And Sergio Cajada's art is extremely dynamic. I mean, if you look at the panels in Anne Die Freud and Bloodbath, they will remind you of the best episodes of Batman the Animated Series, like Heart of Ice, Two-Face, and many other episodes of Batman the Animated Series. And looking at this comic was literally looking like animation come to life. Each of these panels they are so well done and so intricately done that when you take a look at them, you can just see a lot of little things here and there that you missed on the first reading that on the second reading will come out at you. And those little nuances, they make the story even better. That's why I call 
this goth ghost girl comic a masterpiece because just you're going to get so much from this comic that you're going to want to read it again and again so that you can see more that's going on on the page and John Shillam Jr. does a great job of crafting the story on that page and Sergio Okada he does a great job of putting that art on that page that really just makes you want to read this comic not only from first page to the last but it wants, makes you want to go back and pick that comic up again I mean if this if I had a paper copy of this comic I probably would have read it to the point to the cover came off because that's how great the art is in this book and that's how great the story is when I think about Goth Ghost Girl it's a comic on the level of the ones I used to pick up from the newsstand in Times Square back in the late 80s and the grocery store even before that in the mid 80s this is the kind of comic that has you eager after you've read the first issue anticipating getting the next issue and this is a comic again that I can highly recommend and it's one that you really want to pick up because Goth Ghost Girl is one of the best comics in the comic medium today and again I highly recommend you pick it up on Comicsology and I believe that Goth Ghost Girl is going to be a collector's item in the future because from what I've read in the comics I could easily see Lily's story as an Adult Swim animated series or an action figure series in the future like Monster High. So this is a comic that I believe is going to be a classic, it's going to be a collector's item, and it's one that I highly recommend you pick up today.